And then on top of that, it lends those HD textures on top of it. Some of these cases, it makes these games look like they're brand new, maybe released not very long ago. Um, it really brings new life to, okay, new life to them. Um, so I'm gonna open up Dolphin here. I'm gonna click on graphics here for just a moment. Uh, and the reason why is I wanted to click on enhancements. The other really nice thing about uh, this emulation software too is these games were still on standard, standard definition televisions. So they're really only running at 640 by 480. 480. Um, since we will live in a world of high definition screens, if you play them in a regular, regular resolution, the, the screen size looks kind of small. When you stretch them, as, as you all know with working photography, if you stretch a small image to make it bigger, it doesn't always make that bigger image look better. Unless you have some voodoo, I know Ray, Ray's talked about some of the voodoo that he does with, with some of the software to make smaller, larger without getting that degradation. But usually if you pull, the, pull an image, make it larger. And um, uh, I actually had a Photoshop teacher, she used to call that, what that looked like was chunky monkey. And in a lot of cases, yes, yes it does. Um, same goes for some of these games. So what this software also does is it scales the resolution up. So right now, I actually have this um, at four times the resolution. So I'm playing this at 1440p, which is actually a little higher than 1080. Um, in addition, it's also doing some other background things to render the graphics that you're seeing as well. So I'm going to keep this to the side for just a sec. Click on open. And again, since this is Mario Day, I'm going to pick on, this is one of my favorite games. Hmm. Also, I think it's spring break, it feels, feels like it's the best time to play this game. So let me get into this real quick because I want to show you guys what, what it's looking like now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the HD textures so you can see what the game originally looked like. So let's let's jump in. By the way, this game's 20 years old. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Let's, let's go back. All right. Let's go somewhere a little sunnier. Let's just record the premise of this game. Someone's put the entire island. You find out I'm wearing a water backpack on me. I can use that to basically spray away all the oil and grime. So that's a key component in this game. Right, so there's all the oil and grime all over the uh, hills here. All right, let me get a little closer to the wind here. Okay, so you're all seeing how it looks like with all the high definition textures. Let's turn those off. All right, <coughs> off, off. Just for funsy, there's the native resolution. So for that. Let's see if I can get a little closer here. All right. So these are off. It's still so listen to this. Nintendo, Nintendo does really good at polishing their games. So even at 20 year old game, it looks pretty good. Um, again, I'm gonna let's go back in. I'm gonna see here. Um, Oh no. Oh, 
Let me see. All right. All right, we're looking at some of the textures there on the on the on the wall here. Let's let's no, no. All right. All right. There we go. High definition textures. No uh, original textures. Uh, it does depend on it does depend on the power of the computer you're running it on. <laughs> so on normal Max, it, it actually handles a lot of this very well. Um, I'm also going to go back here. Let's go back. Um, well, no, I guess I can't change that. Oh, no, I can't change it on the fly. Sorry about that. No, let's go four times again. So it really just depends. So if I went in there and got really crazy and started telling it, let's, you know, let's do 4K resolution. Um, depending on some of the things I'm running and also running in the background, there are times where you, you may run into things. But for the most part, it's a pretty, especially on a lot of the new processors, it's a very smooth process. Now, if you're still running an Intel Mac, Dolphin does exist in open emulation. They exist for the Intel side, and a lot of these games still run wonderfully on those Apple, or excuse me, Intel based Apple computers, uh, as well as other platforms. Um, but it's very rare to actually run into something where it gives me grief. Um, the other really cool thing is this also has what's called a widescreen hack. So, again, older console, there were no widescreen TVs yet. Uh, so it's still playing everything in the, in the four by three traditional. It does have the ability to force it to do 16 by nine. So let me go back. Let's do that. All right. So again, now I'm forcing it in a 16 by nine ratio, which was real, again, those rooms are not designed for. Once the blue moon though, you will find games that just don't like doing this. <laughs> I have one game that anytime there's water rendering on the screen and I have the widescreen version turned on, the water looks really weird. So uh, it, your miles does vary depending on, on the game, but um, this really does bring some new life and um, new vitality to some of these games that are you know, now 20, 30 years old. Yep. Good question. I, I actually, for this presentation, I'm not doing a stable version. Oh, uh, once in a while, I will sometimes do the, the beta versions. The stable, the stable versions are out of date, missing capital features and web fixes. So I was wondering if I could do the version for the best version of the stable version. No, this, this is the uh, current stable version. Uh, mm -hmm. So he, even so, it, it's still running really, really well. Um, all right, so that's my key. He's, he's already falling asleep. <laughs> All right. So that's Dolphin. So, um, gaming on the Mac. My, my feelings right now are, if you're looking to play the, the latest and greatest, you may not be doing it on the Apple side right now. Um, Will that change? That sort of kind of depends on how Apple courts software developers to make things for their platform. Every now and then at a worldwide development conference, you, it feels like they're trying to do that. And then we see maybe one or two games come out of that relationship and then afterwards, not so much. Um, the last one I think was maybe a year or two ago with Konami. Um, they, they're very popular for some of their, even some of the classic games that you all played, maybe Castlevania back in the 80s and 90s. Um, but I really have not seen Konami announce any future things besides the one game that they released, which also was a game they originally released on the PC. So they basically ported an older game to the Mac side, updated the graphics a little bit, and then said, here you go, and that's the last thing we heard. Taylor. Uh, is Swift a programming language for gaming? Uh, is, are any games being made with it? Uh, that is actually a really good question because yes, you, you could 
big games with Swift and Apple does have um, a code architecture to help them with that. Um, for example, uh, when it comes to like, rendering 3D objects, uh, there's, excuse me, their metal platform. You may have heard Apple talk about that a couple of times. Um, so there, there is a lot of that architecture there. But again, I think the biggest thing is convincing a lot of software developers that it's worth the time and effort to also make these for the Mac and support for the Mac. You know, we'll, we'll see if that changes. Yeah. Uh, the, the biggest thing that Apple has succeeded in is gaming on the mobile market. Yes. And now that you can play mobile things on your Mac OS, I'm seeing that as a potential into the gaming market that they haven't had before. I do see a lot of truth into that. And you'll also see even on the Apple TV, as the Apple TV gets more powerful itself, it does seem like Apple is also putting maybe a little emphasis on those games. Um, there's a lot of, I, I will say, if you're looking for like a laid back look, the thing about games is it's almost, it's almost like movies. There's, there's a lot of different genres. There's, you know, there's, there's first person games, there's action games, adventure games, puzzle games, kind of the, you know, to those like, you know, I like horror movies, I like sci-fi, I like action, I like romance, I like drama. Uh, speaking of romance, there's even gay games, but I'm not going to get into that. Uh, <laughs> um, there are a lot of what I would refer to as like casual laid back puzzle games that you can find on Apple TV. Um, and even in the App Store, so even if I go into the app store here, and I click on App Arcade. Uh, so App Arcade, if you if you are a subscriber to uh, iCloud Plus, ah, oh, there's a plus right there. Um, there there are actually a lot of games in um, Arcade, but as you as many of y'all probably quickly noticed, a lot of these are really kind of laid back, casual puzzle. Pac-Man kind of chill laid back games. Uh, yeah, I even consider Angry Birds maybe laid back. <laughs> laid back. <laughs> um, uh, I, I don't know if there is or isn't. Because I know the, the, the company that made Angry Birds, I think it was Rovio. Um, but I, I don't, I don't really know on that end. Um, now, as far as Apple Arcade games, a lot of these also are ports from their iPad counterparts too, iPhone counterparts. So they they brought them and designed them to work natively on the Mac side as well. Um, it'll be really interesting to see if Apple continues to kind of port these game developers and and push push this on the native Apple side, especially uh, as our processors continue to progress with, you know, M2 and M3, M3 processors too. <laughs> I know it's a lot to cover in, in 45 to 50 minutes, right? <laughs> uh, but again, the, these computers are really are absolutely amazing. Um, uh, I, I work in a field that, that does a lot of video and special effects and a lot of our computers are Apple computers because like you all here, we're looking for something that just works. It's going to be stable. It's going to be able to, you know, take in HD 4K. I'm sure eventually we'll start talking 8K video recordings and, and work with those and render those and turn them around fairly quickly. And uh, the, Processors or the machines are just getting better and better and better at doing this. Any other cues, questions? Yeah. One thing about playing online is <laughs> due to it, you play online, sometimes you switch buildings. Yes. You kind of have to be a so I actually have a fun story about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some years back, um, Steam, the platform I showed you guys on the Windows side, they, they didn't make a Mac version. Probably my only grief with the Mac version is, is again, finding stuff that says it will specifically run on Mac. But when it first came out, they ported some of their more popular games 
from the Windows side over to the Mac side. And one of the games was one of those games where you kind of go around and take out the other characters. Um, but they decided to give everyone that was on the Apple side kind of as a celebration, um, Apple earbuds that your character could wear in the game. I quickly realized, don't wear those because everyone was targeting the Mac users that just joined the game. It's a Mac user, get them. I'm like, ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so learn real quick. Don't wear those iconic white earbuds when playing this game. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> Any others? No, no. All right. Well, uh, I will see if I can put together a list of some of the things I showed you all today, some resources, some, resources, um, some other things I couldn't show you today just for time, timing, and whatnot. Uh, and obviously, if you guys ever have any questions on the subject, feel free to drop me a line. Okay. Hey. And. If, if I'm not mistaken, next month we're having Ray talk about his book that he just wrote. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs>